a parasite that infects your liver and gallbladder. How do you get it? What are some of the signs and symptoms? How do you diagnose it? And what are some of the methods to eradicate it from your body? So let's get right into this. So clonochus is a Chinese liver fluke. It's a parasitic worm. It's a trematode. It looks like a flat worm, okay? It affects 15 to 20 million uh, people worldwide, obviously more in Asia where they have freshwater fish and they might eat it raw or uncooked or undercooked. It's a little bit less prevalent here in the United States, but it is still existing here, okay? So there's another form called uh, fasciola, but there are other ones. There may be three or four different varieties of fluke that can infect your liver and gallbladder. So it infects the liver, gallbladder, and the bile duct, okay? And the reason it likes to go there is because it's rich in nutrients and the larger bile duct provides a shelter for these worms, okay? And <clears throat> it's a place to reproduce. So they basically get into your stomach and then as it hits the duodenum, it kind of sneaks up into the bile duct, gallbladder, and liver. So the mode of trans uh, transmission is uncooked or undercooked freshwater fish, livestock, so people who handle livestock um, could potentially get it, and also things like watercress where they um, use fresh water and, and, and grows in fresh water, uh, it can be in watercress, or vegetables that are irrigated with water that's contaminated. So poor sanitation areas will tend to have it more often. It doesn't transmit from person to person. That's what the literature says. However, there could be a possibility of transmission through sexual contact. All right. So what are some of the signs and symptoms? Okay. First of all, it can impact the GI tract. So you can have indigestion, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and cramping. You can also have things like hives or rashes due to histamine responses. You got to remember these flukes or liver flukes don't just live in the liver and gallbladder. It can live in other areas like pancreas or the lungs and so forth. So there are other areas that it can invade, but it tends to like the liver and the gallbladder. So you often will have a lot of symptoms related to gallbladder. So bile duct blockage, and you may have jaundice or pain in the right upper quadrant radiating to the back of the shoulder. That's the typical referral pattern for gallbladder attacks. So gallstones are also very prevalent uh, when you have these. And there is a certain type of stone called a pigmented uh, gallstone, which is brown and black in color, which could be a potential for a liver fluke. It can also create pancreatitis. Like I said, it sometimes will migrate up into the pancreas. It causes liver damage or hepatomegaly or enlargement of the liver. And then it can also um, cause cancer. So there's cholangiocarcinomas. And then you will also have swollen lymph nodes, um, maybe in the groin, the abdomen, neck area. So you can get inflammation of the lymph nodes also. So what I like to do is go over the diagnosis and the treatment of these flukes or uh, Chinese liver flukes, okay? So when we look at testing, we can look at a stool sample. Basically, you catch a stool sample and they will do a, a ova and parasite testing under a microscope. If you suspect that you have a liver fluke and the first test is negative, you definitely want to go ahead and repeat it more than once, okay? So that's the stool test you want to do. In terms of a blood test, you can do a PCR test for the clonochus senesis, which is the Chinese liver fluke. You can also do a bile or serum IgG4. This is not very specific for liver fluke, but it can pick up uh, possible infection or parasites. If you have a high eosinophil and basophil on your blood work, there's a possibility of that infection or any parasitic infection. Okay. 
In terms of imaging, you can actually pick it up sometimes on ultrasound, CT scan or MRI if the worm itself is mature enough. Or what you're looking for is a dilation of that biliary duct, which can indicate a possibility of liver flukes living in there. Of course, history matters. So if you travel to Asia or you eat raw uh, freshwater fish or fresh vegetables that are grown in water, but you don't know uh, if you are contaminated or not. If you have exposure to livestock and you handle livestock all the time, there could be a possible exposure from fecal matter. So you want to look at the testing to make sure you have this specific problem, okay? So let's go into some of the remedies. Now, I don't prescribe medications in my office, but here are the medications listed here, right? You would have to take a course of medications in order to eradicate the liver fluke. Let's talk more about the herbal remedies. So in order to prepare your body for a cleanse or the parasite cleanse, you want to be able to support the GI tract and the gallbladder for a minimum of two weeks prior to going into taking antimicrobial or antiparasitic herbs. I would continue the GI and the gallbladder support through the herbal remedies, okay? So you'll start two weeks uh, of GI support and gallbladder and you will continue this for the next six to eight weeks. Week number three, you're going to start the anti-parasitic uh, herbs. So you can use things like woodworm, black walnut um, hull, garlic, clove, oil of oregano, berberine, neem, olive leaf, and you can also consider using a binder because when you start to kill off these um, parasites, you're going to have some die off. So you want to be able to bind some of the toxins out of your system. You can also use mimosa pudica. And another trick is stirring up those um, liver flukes with a coffee enema. So when you do a coffee enema, uh, some of that caffeine and coffee will get absorbed into the portal vein right into the liver and it can kind of stir them up, and you can utilize that to shake them up and utilize the herbs. My recommendation typically is to rotate the herbs every two weeks. So many companies will come with a concoction of multiple herbs in their products. So let's say you use a company like Designs for Health. They'll have an anti-parasitic remedy. You'll use that for two weeks. And then you'll go to a different company like Biocedin, you can use that for two weeks. And, or you can use another company like um, Apex Energetics and use an antimicrobial formula from them. So you can want to rotate these herbs uh, for six to eight weeks in order to have the best effect. And sometimes you will see them in the stool, right? They basically look like tiny little flat worms uh, in the stool when they start to pass. So you want to go ahead and make sure to check your stool for that. If you're obviously positive on stool testing, you can wait after doing all these herbal remedies and then recheck, all right? Sometimes it can be kind of tricky because everyone's a little different and it depends on how significant the infection is, all right? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.